Oh, it is Bible story time. Now, I need to do some filling in for you. So we left off with Moses going off to be with the king's daughter, okay? And his mum being the servant woman that helps. Now, Moses grows up um, and then he learns actually that he isn't um, an Egyptian. He is a Hebrew boy. Um, so he actually learns his real heritage and for some reason or another he has to flee the country. Um, so he leaves, he actually ends up harming someone who was hurting his people and because of that he then had to leave because he harmed one of the king's people and obviously he'd lived with the king for years and years. So he flees, he goes to the desert and he actually becomes a shepherd for what will be his father-in-law, which is the dad of someone who will be his wife. Okay, that makes sense? That is your father-in-law. So you've got a mum and a dad, and then if you get married, um, the that person has a mum and a dad, and then mum and dad become your in-laws. Um, so he is now, we are with Moses in the desert and he is a shepherd. So this is called the burning bush. And this is when God actually comes to Moses and says, look, come on. So the sun was burning hot. Moses' skin was burned dark brown. And suddenly he saw it, a bright red burning bush. Its branches crackled orange and red. And Moses could not help but watch. For the bush did not burn up. Take off your shoes, came a voice from the bush. This is a very special place. Who are you? asked Moses. And why are you talking to me? I am just a poor shepherd. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, the voice replied. And you are more than a shepherd. You are Moses, the man I have chosen to lead my people out of Egypt. I can't do that, Moses trembled. I left Egypt years ago and I'm an old man now. You can do it. You must do it. God answered, for my people are slaves in Egypt and have prayed to be set free. I've heard their prayers and you are the man I have chosen. But what if I go and they don't believe you sent me, Moses asked. Take the walking stick that's in your hand, God said, and throw it on the ground. Moses did as God told him and the stick turned into a wriggling snake. Now pick it up, God commanded. Moses wrapped a shaking hand around the snake's scaly middle and it turned back into a stick. Show them that, God laughed. Then they'll believe you. But I'm so shy, Moses continued. I'm no good at talking to people. Don't worry about that, God assured him. Your brother Aaron loves to talk. You can take him with you. Now go, my people need your help. So Moses went. He put on his shoes, he picked up his walking stick and he went off to set God's people free. So this is where we now find Moses. So Moses is kind of, he doesn't know his full potential. He got scared and he left Egypt and the people that he left were his people as well. And they were God's people. And God didn't want his people to be suffering anymore. He didn't want his people to be slaves to the Egyptian way. He wanted them to be set free. But that meant that Moses had to go back to Egypt and confront the Pharaoh, the person who he had lived with for so many years and then fled the country. So what we will see in our next story is him and his brother go talking to the Pharaoh. But what we can see from this story is actually God can use anyone, even if we fear that our skills or talents aren't good enough. God just says, yes, they are, because I am here, because I have a plan, because I know what you can do and I have chosen you. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that we are your chosen people, that you love us enough to give us a plan for our lives and that you look after us. In your mighty name, Amen. So there we leave Moses and tomorrow we will see him going to the Pharaoh. So I'll see you later. Bye.